in the Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977. Coming to you live from Radio K9 Studio. For the record. For the record. For the record. Here, Here from, from your, your government, government officials, officials, independents, and the opposition on issues that matter to you. For the record. Engage in an open dialogue between residents and lawmakers. For the record. For the record. For the record. Informative, impartial, insightful. This is your talk show. 1 800 534 8255. Your calls, your input. This is For the Record. And now, your host, Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome to For the Record. Today is Wednesday, the 26th day of September 2018. I trust that everyone had an enjoyable evening. I want to uh, express uh, our sincerest uh, condolences to those families who have lost uh, loved ones during the past few days, past few weeks as well, and uh, trust uh, that you will find uh, comfort um, through your, your beliefs um, through uh, the memories that you have of your um, loved ones as well. I want to thank you, our listening and viewing audience, for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands into your places of work, whether it be an office cubicle or if you're working in the outdoors. For the Record is a show produced by the staff and management of Radio Cayman, and it is geared towards keeping you abreast of issues as they arise and play out on the local, regional, and international scene. I am your host, Orit Connor, and you're welcome to join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7.30 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Our phone lines are always open. There is always someone there waiting to take your calls, normally. That beautiful radio voice of Miss Susan Watson. You can call us on our toll-free number, provided courtesy of Flow. That toll-free number is one eight hundred five three four eight two five five. You can also call us on nine four nine eight zero three seven and nine four nine six nine nine zero. Of course, if you don't like to talk on the telephone, email us at for the record. That is one word for the record at c a n d w dot k y. We also have a WhatsApp number. That WhatsApp number is nine two five three two six one, where you can send us a text message or leave us a voice note, the contents of which will be played during the course of the show. And of course, you can follow us on YouTube by subscribing to Radio Cayman live stream. Now, we have a very, very special uh, presentation for you this morning. Um, and uh, for those of you who have, are, are already tuned in, I want you to call your friends, tell everybody to listen in Right now, tune in to 89.9 Radio Cayman for the record, because we're going to talk about something. And you would have heard me say at the opening of uh, my remarks that today is the 26th day of September 2018. And I'm going to read an excerpt from an article in... um, I uh, came on I news and this was an article in uh 2013 um and uh uh the writer Georgina uh Wilcox at that time said how many of us here in Cayman do not remember the significance of September 26 let's see how many of you remember it now and I will jog your memory uh, if you don't remember. Uh, The writer said that she didn't, but their publisher at that time, uh, Mrs. Joan Wilson, did. And why? how did she remember it? And what did she remember? On September the 26th, 1968, Leela Alberta Ross Shire passed away. And who was Leela? Alberta Roche Shire. 
Born Leela Alberta Ro uh, McTaggart in Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands, on the 16th of November, 1886, to William Henry McTaggart and Emily Ann Borden, Leela was a very accomplished musician. She was organist and choir leader at Emsley Memorial Church, United Church, and taught the guitar. Joan Wilson was one of her pupils. She, Miss Leela, also composed music. As Joan said, she was much loud, and her first love was her husband, Bentley Augustus Ross, with whom she had two children, Leela Emily Ross and Arthur Bentley Ross. After her husband died, she married Samuel William Shar. She died in Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands. Members of the shipbuilding arch family are related to her by daughter Leela Emily after she married Henry James Arch. In 1930, Leela Rorschach composed a song she called Beloved Isle Cayman. And for many years, it was regarded as the unofficial national song. song. It was not until 1993 when it became the official national song when the Cayman Islands coat of arms, flag, and national song law, laws were passed. Beloved Isle Cayman, as composed by Leela Ross Shire, June 1930. And now what we're going to do is we're going to play a rendition of Beloved Isle Cayman, composed by Leela Alberta Ross Shire.
Well, folks, that was a special rendition of Beloved Isles Cayman. It uh, was arranged and orchestrated by Mr. John McLaughlin Williams. The vocals are by Miss Lisa Scott. And there is a CD, the artwork, which has been done by Miss Karen Ryan as well. I will also mention, uh, I may get in trouble for doing this, but I'm going to mention it anyway, that there is um, a documentary that has been done on the late Leela Ross Shire, and that will be premiered this evening at the public library. Uh, between 6 and 8 p.m. I believe it may be by invite only, but I say this only to point at the fact that there is a documentary, and I'm sure that it will be made available uh, to the public. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ms. Susan for collaborating with me on this on such short notice uh, this morning. So from here on in, folks, you want to remember 26th of September what it means to the Cayman Islands. Because for us here in the Cayman Islands, dates don't really mean a whole lot, just like sometimes people don't mean a whole lot to us. And we have to know our history. We have to know where we came from. We have to know where we are now. And we have to know where we want to go as well. And it is my fervent um, hope, my desire, that at some point in time, Beloved Isle Cayman will be our national anthem as well. The way things are going and the way people are thinking and still clinging to the UK, I, at one point in time, I believe it would happen in my lifetime. I'm not so certain uh, about that now, but I'm still hoping that, you know, where there is hope... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where there is life, there is hope, and I am going to continue uh, to uh, to believe that as well. Uh, gives me great opportunity to bring into the conversation with us this morning none other than MLA, Mr. Kenneth Bryan, and as you know, he represents um, Georgetown Central in our Legislative Assembly. Mr. Bryan, good morning. Welcome to For the Record, and thanks so much for being so patient for this Short notice that we had in terms of the, the change of pro, slight change of program. Um, good morning, OC, and good morning to the listening audience. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And for that little delay was a pleasure. Um, our, our national um, song um, is one of the probably the most um, set of words put together that we should listen to and, and, and be proud of. And taking a few minutes probably wouldn't even give it enough justification. Um, so you can take as much time as you need in those kinds of matters. Okay, we have one caller that the call in. We're going to try to take that caller before we go to our uh, because they may want to be talking about what uh, about Miss Leela Ross. Our uh, caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Oh, we lost that caller. So we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, the conversation with Mr. Kenneth Bryan will continue. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the historical vignette series sponsored by Cayman National Bank. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. The Cayman Islands, he had founded it upon the seas. While the Cayman Islands has long been a maritime abode, it was under Commissioner Alan Cardinal that the pastime of yachting or sailing would come to pass. Commissioner Cardinal started his post in the Cayman Islands on February 14, 1934. In January 1935, the first Cayman Islands regatta was held in Georgetown, with boats participating from Cayman Brat. Commissioner Cardinal had foreseen that the islands were capable of showcasing their excellent shipbuilding and sailing talents in organized competition as a means to attract international investors with the assistance of one Edmund S. Parsons and Lieutenant Colonel B.P. Dobson, Commissioner Cardinal would form the Cayman Islands Yacht Club. 
In a sign of genius, the Yacht Club was also used to reform the local Boy Scouts, but as Sea Scouts serving in Georgetown and West Bay. By 1937, the Cayman Islands Yacht Club boasted 134 members, with 150 Boy Scouts and Cubs. Radio Cayman's historical facts vignettes are proudly brought to you by Cayman National, with branches on all three Cayman Islands. Visit Cayman National Bank today for all of your financial needs. I need a bank that is convenient for me. What do you mean? I need a bank that has easy to find locations and plenty ATMs when I need cash on the go. Oh well, that's easy. You need to bank with Cayman National. They have seven customer service centers and 22, I mean 23 ATM locations. The newest one is at the East End Post Office and I hear there's more to come. Well, well, sounds like I need to bank with Cayman National Bank, the convenient bank, because they seem to be everywhere. Yeah, that's true. Cayman National is everywhere. Surely, they are Cayman's convenient bank. Kim and National Bank, we're here for you. Did you hear that Vant Motors has your sale going on now? And you get your choice on the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. Are you kidding me? What's wrong? I ran out of my meds and I have an interview in about an hour. Why not call CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy? They'll be able to help. You think so? Absolutely. Their pharmacists are brilliant for fast, efficient and professional service. CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy provides you with more than just prescriptions. We strive to make your health our concern. We recognize the complexities of pharmaceuticals and the need to personalize your care. That is why we offer personalized one-on-one counseling. Call us today or visit our website at caymanpharmacy.com. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a less than container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load, or LCL, is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. That's why you need contractors all risk insurance from Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Ensure you're covered in the event of property damage and third-party injury or damage claims during your construction projects. And with Fidelity Insurance Brokers, you can be sure you are getting competitive pricing and superior customer service. Call us today for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Earth, fire, wind, water. Harness the magic power of the four elements during the Miss Cayman Miss World pageant Saturday, September 29th at the Hartwell Theater. Be on hand to see who will wear the crown and represent the Cayman Islands at the Miss World pageant. Tickets are limited, so purchase them today at Rock Gorgeous, Back to Health, and Beyond Basics for $50 general and $75 VIP, which includes a cocktail. Doors open at 6. Show starts at 7.30. Cash bar is available. Witness the magic. System 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. 1-800-534-8255. Waiting to hear from you for the record with your host, Aurit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. I think the caller has uh, rejoined us. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yeah, good morning. OC, how are you doing? Uh, good morning. I'm fine, sir. How are you? Yeah, Mr. Brian, good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you as well, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, OC, well, you know where I grew up, right? Right, right. And Miss Leela, I, I know how to come out of my, my yard to look at Miss Leela playing that song. And it was a four-string guitar, you know, she had. That was after she had came back from Honduras, you know. It was a four-string guitar sitting on the porch in the swing. And I remember me going over there all the time, watching her. I can remember the old guitar she had. 
It was a Coronado made, made in made in Korea. Corne- a Coronado guitar. And um you 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 knew how she had passed away, right? Remember how she passed away? Uh, g- yes, caller, go ahead. No, I said, do, do you, you remember, remember how, how she passed, passed away? away? Uh, not precisely. Well, when she passed away, one Sunday morning in front of the wholesome bakery, she was taking a swim. Weather was bad. And where did she used to swim at that time? It was a big blow hole right there. Right in front of the wholesome bakery, and then she passed away that that morning, that okay. Sunday morning. Okay. So she passed away, but I I knew her when she was practicing that song. Then we did record it, and she was practicing that song. So I I knew her quite well. Mm-hmm. So lived right in front of her. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, caller, for that, uh, Mr. Brian. Uh, we still have. Some time, uh, lots of things happening. Uh, you guys mm. are extremely uh, busy. Uh, I think that there's going to be a road show that's going to be taking place as well. You're going to be part of that? Um, j- just for the listening audience's um, 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 knowledge, I think you're speaking about the, um, Re- uh, the road show for the, for the discussion about the referendum. Right, yes. Uh-huh. Um, not officially. Uh, uh, the last time I spoke with the members of the opposition, um, you know, there was some indication that, you know, me potentially be involved, but um, nothing has developed since then. Um, and understandably, um, we, we we all doing our own thing in respect to getting out and letting people know our viewpoints, mm-hmm. in particular with the referendum. Um, so it's not like we, we're not all doing our separate things. Um, and, but my position comes a little bit different than, the, than those in opposition okay. because I, I see it not from a perspective of against the port. Um, I, I believe in democracy. And if there's any issues that I do have with the process upon which we're embarking on um, to improve our cruise pier um, or redevelop our cruise pier um, opportunities, it's based on the fact of information or lack thereof um, and the respect for the will of the people to have information provided. To be honest with you, it's rather sad and disappointing that we are at this stage where it be- has become a big deal um, for the community to be gathering together to want to hold a referendum now. And I think it's because the government has failed to keep a continued flow of information to make the people feel comfortable and competent and confident about embarking on such a major development. Um, and for those out there who are at this particular point trying to um, have a referendum called on on such a major matter, um, I think it's the democratic process in its truest form. And I respect it. Um, there's a reason why it's in our constitution and if a group of people in our society feel that they want to have their say in any decision let's not only focus on the port it could be about um, you know alcohol sales on sunday or or um, same-sex marriages i think that we have to trust the the, um, democratic process and that's how every nation across the world works and so some people are quite upset with the um with those persons who are seeking petition, I don't see it that way. I see that's their legitimate right, mm-hmm. um, and and they should use it. Um, uh, so I support them in that. Um, whether they get the numbers or not, we'll see. The people should have their say, and they'll never, as a representative of the people, ever vote against the people having their own say. I think it's, it's, it's their right. How divisive is this issue going to be in the Cayman Islands in terms of pitting one group of people um, against the other. Because I, I believe that some entities, some groups are not being honest in terms of their approach. There are some people who are saying, we're not against the port, we're just against what is being proposed. But yet they have not put any 
thing on the table in terms of alternatives um, other than you hear, uh, let's create a better experience um, for our cruise ship passengers. Um, This, at the end of the day, depending on the wording, and the government will decide on the wording of a referendum. And there are several things to bear in mind. Number one, Mm -hmm. it is a referendum that is not going to be advisory in nature, which means that you advise the government one way or the other. It is going to be a binding. It's a binding referendum. It's binding at the end of the day. So the results of that are going to be uh, bound the government. If it is defeated, then the government can't really proceed you know, on, on, on that basis, whether or not they find another way. What we have to be careful is that we don't end up with buyer's remorse. I know you Like change. people in the UK are having now yes. with Brexit. <laughs> You're right. We have to be extremely careful. Um, well, OC, you said some very important things. Um, and the two things that I heard you focused on is that persons who, who are opposing this um, are not really offering solutions. You did, but you said only to um, to improve the current experience. Mm-hmm. That is a solution as well. Yeah, it's not necessarily one that everybody agrees with, um, but it's a viewpoint that, um, and I think we're speaking about the opposition leaders' um, viewpoint on rather than having crews to to um, uplift the current experience that we have mm-hmm. without going through the extent. Yeah, others of the than, the, than the leader of the opposition have said so too. Though. Yes, yeah. so so <coughs> I, I think that's a approach. Um, that's one of them, um, and, and it's a matter of um, different um, reasonings or ideas to, to ultimately solve the same problem. Um, I think that everybody should have the right, the, per, the elected member, um, the opposition leader, has a job to do, and, and he's voicing his opinion on behalf of the people of the country and particularly on behalf of the opposition. Whether I agree with it or not is is, is different, but he has that right. Um, and so does the government. The government has their right, they believe, creating a, a, a brand new um, cruise pier um, facility where um, boats can dock is the best way forward. Um, but I want to focus on the most important thing here is mm-hmm. okay. information. We're going to be going to the news now, so rather than having you get halfway through that and interrupt, we're going to go to our 8 o'clock news. Folks, please stay tuned for the record with Mr. Kenneth Bryan. We'll be back immediately after the 8 o'clock news. Studio time now by Price Right is 7.59. Price Right is Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. Making your dollar go further with huge savings and no membership fees. Get more of the things you use every day at the right price. But it's not just grocery and health and beauty. Price Right has a full range of products from office to automotive, patio furnishings to kitchen appliances, and even electronics. And since warehouse prices mean savings for you, everything is priced right at Price Right. Grand Cayman's warehouse shopping superstore. The voice of the Cayman Islands. 89.9 FM in Grand Cayman and 93.9 FM in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Silver wings shining in the sunlight. Radio Cayman. Access information. Your community. News and information. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. Four men charged with importing more than 500 pounds of ganja have their charges transmitted to the Grand Court. Martin Trench, Kendall Strawman, Andre Russell, and Basil Anthony are alleged to have all played a role in importing 513 pounds of ganja on September 7th. No pleas were entered today when the men were remanded into custody. The Department of Environment office in Cayman Brack reports a burglary. Someone broke into the office stealing three spear guns and spear gun parts. Rural Cayman Islands Police Service officers responded just after 9 a.m. on Monday at the office on Creek Road. The outside door had been breached. If you have any information about this, you're encouraged to call 949-4222. 
In the meantime, the DOE says bon voyage to two special hatchlings found in Cayman Brac and released to sea this week. By special, the DOE reports it's the first time they've seen leukistic turtles, meaning lacking normal color, alive on Cayman Brac. Leukistic hatchlings are very rare, but they've been found on all three islands, including one nest in Grand Cayman this year. In other news... The School of Hospitality Studies celebrates the end of its fourth cohort graduating from the program at an awards ceremony Tuesday night at the Wharf. Tourism Minister the Honorable Moses Kirkconnell presented young Caymanian graduates with certificates and special awards for their hard work and successful completion of the program. During his remarks, Minister Kirkconnell noted there's much to celebrate as it's the largest cohort seen to date. Among the awards given out, Ashley White received the award for top student and Matthew Forbes picked up the Minister's Award. And taking an idea from page to stage. Earlier this month, the National Gallery presented a special lecture which provided an opportunity to learn about the process behind the fashion magic. It was about the process of getting uh, a show onto a stage from the very conception of the production meetings coming up with uh, the show theme, the look of it, uh, how designers work together with the whole team and that, that process that's involved. Lecturer Sarah McDougall shared her real-life experience as a costume designer from Royal Opera House shows at Covent Garden to her work on films like The Man in the Iron Mask and Restoration. Audience were very kind. There were lots of questions throughout. Um, People genuinely seem very interested because it's something that's quite unusual. Mrs. McDougall teaches at the Cayman Islands Further Education Center, and she says she's proud to see the SciFec embracing vocational training in the multimedia and artistic space. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC who will take us out of the newscast. I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. BBC News, I'm John Shea. Indian politicians and activists have largely welcomed a landmark decision by the Supreme Court about the status of a controversial biometric identification system. Judges ruled that the Aadhaar scheme is constitutional, but they imposed limits on its use. Many hailed the court's decision not to allow banks and phone companies to insist on access to the scheme's data. The chairman of Australia's national broadcaster, the ABC, has refused to resign in a growing row over perceived political interference. Hundreds of employees called called for Justin Milne to go, following a report that he tried unsuccessfully to have a senior economics journalist sacked after the former prime minister complained about tax policy coverage. Pope Francis has attempted to reassure Chinese Catholics following an agreement last week between Beijing and the Vatican to cooperate. The Pope acknowledged that some Chinese Catholics felt anxious and abandoned, but he asked them to work towards reconciliation. The leader of Britain's main opposition Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, has told the party conference that Britain's foreign policy is no longer sustainable. He attacked President Trump's decision to pull out of the Paris Climate Accord and the Iran nuclear deal and to move the US embassy in Israel to Jerusalem. Parliament in Russia has given preliminary approval to a controversial bill that will significantly raise the retirement age. The reforms have prompted some of the biggest protests since President Putin first took office. The former French Prime Minister Manuel Valls has launched his campaign to become mayor of the Spanish city of Barcelona, his birthplace. An opponent of Catalan separatism, he said he was the candidate of moderation. And researchers re-evaluating scientific data recorded during the Second World War have shown that Allied bombing raids on Germany created shockwaves powerful enough to disturb the atmosphere at the edge of space. And that's the latest BBC World News. Access. Information. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. You can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. The Chamber of Commerce Business Excellence Awards are back. Saturday, October 27th at the Ritz Carlton. Join in as we honor the contributions of the Cayman business community, celebrate the lifetime achievements of an outstanding business leader, and enjoy live musical entertainment. The Business Excellence Awards are proudly sponsored by the Ministry of Commerce, Brit K, Caribbean Alliance, Caldwell Banker, Yellow Media Group, and more. Visit businessexcellenceawards.ky for more info. The Business Excellence Awards, Saturday, October 27th. For tickets, call 743-9129. Business, study people business, study people business, so... 
Pet owners are responsible for the protection of their pets during disaster events. If you plan to evacuate, plan for your pet as well, because they are not allowed in public emergency shelters. If you go to friends or relatives, and if it's okay to take your pets, also take your pet survival kit as well. Your kit should include proper ID, collar and tag, carrier or cage, leash, at least two weeks supply of moist pet food to preserve water, water or food bowls, any necessary medications, and plenty of newspaper for sanitary purposes and disinfectant. After the disaster, be careful in allowing your pets outside. Downed power lines, damaged buildings, and other animals and insects brought with the disaster could also present real dangers to your pet. Also, take care not to allow your pet to consume food or water which may have become contaminated. Message brought to you by the Barbados Government Information Service and Breeze 105.3. Want to hear the facts about Cayman's cruise birthing facility? The Deputy Premier and Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Moses Kirkconnell, invites you to a public meeting at the Family Life Center on Wednesday, September 26th at 6.30 p.m. Come and hear the latest updates and have your questions answered. Refreshments will be provided. In financial news, European markets were flat today following a day of gains in Asia as traders awaited an expected interest rate hike by the U.S. Federal Reserve. Keeping score in Europe, France's CAC 40 added 0.2% to 5,488, and Germany's DAX fell 0.1% to 12,363. Britain's FTSE 100 was flat at 7,506. On Wall Street, S&P 500 futures rose 0.2% to 2,927. Dow futures gained 0.2% to 26,500. Looking at Asia's day, Japan's Nikkei 225 index rose 0.4% to 24,033. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index, which reopened after a holiday, jumped 1.2% to 27,816. The Shanghai Composite Index added 0.9% to 2,806. Markets were closed in South Korea for a national holiday. In energy, benchmark U.S. crude added eight cents to seventy-two thirty-six per barrel in electronic trading on the New York Mercantile Exchange. The contract gained 0.3 percent on Tuesday to close at seventy-two dollars twenty-eight cents. Brent crude, used to price international oils, rose twenty-six cents to eighty-one fifty-two per barrel. It settled at eighty-one twenty-six after climbing to eighty-one eighty-seven per barrel in London, its highest price since November two thousand fourteen. And in currencies, the dollar eased to 112.86 yen from 112.97. The euro strengthened to 1.1770 from 1.1766. Come on, come on. Hey, are those new glasses on Will? Yeah, we went to Optical Outlook. Wham, bam, easy exam. <laughs> Finally, an exam he could pass. <laughs> and we have the glasses the next day. Easiest part of our back-to-school shopping for sure. Book your child's eye exam today at Optical Outlook. Call 746-2020. Save 50% off a complete pair of glasses with any student eye exam. Now extended until September 28th. Come see the difference with Optical Outlook located in the Caymanian Village. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Did you know that cooking oils, grease, paint, solvents, bleach, and cleaning supplies are classified as hazardous waste? and should not be disposed with regular household waste? Dispose of these and other hazardous waste items at the 24-hour drop-off site located at the entrance of the Georgetown landfill. Do your part. Keep Cayman clean. For more tips on proper waste handling, visit DEH website at www.deh.gov.ky. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Honey, our fridge has stopped working again. Everything in the freezer is melting. We need to get this repaired right away. I'm calling Brand Source Service. When you need the very best appliance service, call Brand Source Service at 623 5000. Offering service and installation of all brands and models of appliances. Brand Source Service is Cayman's source for appliance parts and repairs with qualified and experienced technicians and the island's largest stock of appliance parts brand source service will have your repair completed in a flash so whatever the problem is call the experts at 623-5000 brand source service dorsey drive industrial park telephone 623-5000 good morning and time now for the latest weather report 
Current temperature is 84 degrees. Relative humidity is 87 percent. Barometric pressure 29.95 inches and rising. The wind is east-northeast at 9 knots. Overnight low temperature was 79 degrees. Synopsis indicate light to moderate winds and seas expected over the next 24 hours due to a weak pressure gradient across the northwest Caribbean. Radar images show isolated showers in and around the Cayman area moving towards the west. The National Hurricane Center is issuing advisories on Tropical Storm Kirk. Kirk regenerated into a tropical storm and at last check was located near 11.8 north, 52.7 west. It's about 470 miles east of Barbados. Kirk is moving west at 18 miles per hour with the maximum sustained winds of 45 miles per hour. The system poses no immediate threat to the Cayman Islands. If you need additional information, you can always visit www.nhc.noaa.gov. Now the forecast for the Cayman Islands for today, calling for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of morning showers and possible thunder, and temperatures will rise to the low 90s. Your winds will be east to northeast at 10 to 15 knots, and seas will be slight to moderate with wave heights of 2 to 4 feet. Tonight, we can expect partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of late night showers and temperatures falling to the upper 70s tonight. Your winds will be east to northeast at 5 to 10 knots. Seas will be slight with wave heights of 1 to 3 feet. High tide will be this morning at 5 minutes past 10. Low tide this afternoon at 3.57. High tide again tonight at 9.47. The sun will set this evening at 6.16 and rise tomorrow morning at 6.16. And the outlook is calling for similar weather conditions through Friday morning. Your weather update after 8 is brought to you by Brand Source Home Gallery, creating elegant bathrooms with European style fixtures and fittings. Let's take a look what's happening on our roads. Busy traffic coming from the east and Shamrock Road and also on the Linford Pearson Highway, and steady traffic coming off of Agnes Way. And on Crew Road, parts of Crew Road are moderate. Others are. Other section is busy traffic closer to town. And on Godfrey Nixon Way, things are not looking too bad as traffic is moderate and light to moderate traffic flow coming from the West Bay four way stop. On Shedden Road, in and out of Georgetown, things aren't looking too bad as traffic is flowing light to moderate and moderate flow of traffic in both directions of the West Bay Road in front of the Ritz. North Sound Road flowing moderately as well as coming off of the Esley Tibbetts Highway. Traffic is steady but flowing. And on Edward Street in front of the Georgetown Post Office, things not looking too bad as traffic is moderate. That's the very latest on your traffic. Join us again at about 10 minutes after 12 as we update you on your traffic. Have a good morning and drive safe, Cayman Islands. The 2018 Fall Labor Force Survey, LFS, conducted by the Economics and Statistics Office, ESO, starts on Sunday, September 30th, 2018. The LFS collects data on employed and unemployed persons. Trained interviewers with ESO ID cards will visit randomly selected households in all districts. The interviews are confidential in accordance with the statistics law. No individual data will be published or disclosed. Survey data are exempt from freedom of information. For more details, please call the ESO hotline, 516-3329. September at Kirk Home Center. Save on Pratt & Lambert Pro Hide Gold Interior Flat Latex Paint. Five gallons for $99.99. And touch-up details with a three-pack Pro Max paintbrush set for $10.99. Enjoy homemade dinners on a 30-piece white porcelain dinnerware set from Gibson for $31.09. Organize, store away, and declutter with storage totes starting at $12.79. Kirk's Home Center. In local sports, on Sunday, Cayman's equestrian team tacked up for the start of the show jumping season with the kickoff of the first leg of the 2018-19 National Jumping Series. 
Organized by the Equestrian Federation, the show was held at the Equestrian Center on the Linford Pearson Highway in Georgetown. As Radio K-Man's Andrell Harris reports, in addition to the National Jumping Series, an introductory cross-rail jumping class was held in the morning for novice riders and horses. Highlights of the day include wins by Olivia Zenica in both the 0.60 meter and 0.70 meter classes, the latter of which was the most exciting competition of the day. Four of the six entries made the jump off and the top three placings were separated by a little more than a second. Com- competing for the first time in the CIFE's National Jumping Series were Madison Ameline, Sarah Martin, Roseanne Stroh and Gina Lemos who won the 0.60-meter horse class on JR Booming Gun. The CIEF is a registered non-profit in the Cayman Islands, and among its mission is to grow equestrian sports in the Cayman Islands and support its athletes competing for Cayman in international competitions. The next horse show on the CIFE calendar is the second leg of the National Jumping Series, which will be held on October 14th at the Equestrian Center at 8 a.m. As always, spectators are welcomed and admission is free. Andrell Harris, Radio Cayman Sports. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orrit Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. In the studio with me this morning, MLA, Mr. Kenneth Bryan. Mr. Bryan. Good morning again, OC. Um, and thank, thank you again for allowing me to be on the show. Um, and, and to those who are listening and, and rejoining us. Um, before we went to the break, I think we were speaking about um, the discussion in respect to true democracy and what it stands for um, and how it relates to what's transpiring right now mm-hmm. with um, the crew sport. And uh, I think you suggested a, a, that some of the groups uh, of each side uh, and you suggested, could it potentially be a decisive mechanism for the country? Divisive. divisive. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Divisive, not decisive. Um, and, and I agree with you. The truth is, is that uh, what we're seeing are claims that those for and against the um, the cruise port um, um, re, uh, redevelopment, um, people are, are not playing the game fair in the way of democracy. Um, and one of those things that, that is concerning actually is in today's uh, local um, paper. And it says, um, government says um, a referendum would kill the cruise port. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there has been a slogan now being painted to say signing the referendum equals to a no vote for the port. And, and and to be honest with you, um, I, I'm quite sad and concerned about such kind of information um, being suggested by the government to the people of the country, because that's effectively incorrect. Um, they can suggest that that's what they believe will happen, but if you make a statement like that and being a government, you're the authority of the people. For those who may not... Um, decide to dissect the information for themselves, they would take that as gospel, like what we say. Um, but that's not true. Um, what a referendum is, is allowing you, the people, to have a choice. Now, you can say, we don't think that a referendum is necessary. You can say that you believe it could hurt the process. But you can't definitively say that it would mean a no vote for the port, because that's technically not true. Um, and there's a level of responsibility um, on the government to be honest and be transparent. And, and that's what democracy is about. Actually, what the government headline on the Cayman Compass actually says, referendum would kill cruise port. What they're, they're effectively saying is democracy would kill the cruise port. Because every citizen of this country has the democratic right constitutionally to have their say if they want to. We do not live in a a dictatorial uh, society, and they they have that choice. If how how can we, um, as a government, say to a group of people we that that say they want their choice, regardless of what their choice may be, that they shouldn't have that? Uh, I think it sends the wrong message. It it and it it comes off as if to say, um, if you have your say, you're going to try to stop it. Now, 
you suggested before we went to the break, um, Mr. Corner, that the referendum is binding. And they're worried about that. And you, you were right to say we may have buyer's remorse quite like what's happening with Brexit. But isn't that what democracy is? You have to live with the choices that you make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you decide today, say, listen, you know, there's 12 of us in a car and um, uh, seven of you want to go to Subway to eat something nice and healthy and um, five say they want to go to KFC, democracy always wins and then you go to Subway and eat something healthy. But if it happens in the reverse and seven of you say they want to go to KFC and find some fatty foods, then um, obviously you're going to have to leave with the repercussions of probably a bad diet or or high cholesterol or whatever comes along with eating bad. Um, But you you can't say because a potential chance a person making the wrong decision, potential chance, um, that you should, should circumvent the process of democracy. And I think that's what is missing here. And what we're having is both sides... um, saying things that are incorrect and confusing the people of this country. Um, What is a referendum and and what is a petition to ask for a referendum? Ultimately, the people are just saying, I want to have my say, and I believe they have that right. Now, if 25% of your uh, registered voters um, make that number of signatures, I support the, um, the petition for referendum. I think where the obligation comes in for success of um, the cruise port is for government to be effective in in convincing the people of this country that the port is a good thing. And that's where they're failing, hence the reason why we're here. Um, And if you cannot convince the masses, then uh, you haven't done your job to, to, to... ultimately get the approval of any such decision, regardless of what the decision is. Um, so I, 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 I think that it's, it's wrong at this particular point for, for the government to be it re, um, saying such things in respect to saying that signing a petition for a referendum, which is democracy itself, um, would be a no to the port. And I, it's irresponsible in my view. Yeah. I, th- I think that headline in, 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 in the Cayman and Compass, government ref- referendum would kill the cruise port, it's done mainly um, to arouse sensation more than anything else. Because when you read uh, mm. the, the text of the article and it says government has claimed that holding a referendum on the issue of cruise pairs in Georgetown would delay the project to such an extent it would effectively ki- kill it. Yeah. That it would effectively kill it. So, 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 so they, the they carried it a little bit further than, than need be. That, yeah. That, uh, that. I would like to examine that when we come back from that okay. phone call. We have two callers. Let's go to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Good, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm, I'm well, thank you. I hope the same for you. Um, I, just, uh, uh, I just want to make a quick point. Mr. Brian was just talking about a comparison between a bunch of people in a car. But you have just committed the same sin as uh, as you uh, as what you accuse uh, some of the par- or both parties, perhaps, of uh, doing in the uh, run-up to uh, uh, asking people's signature on the referendum. You, you, uh, you painted one choice of food as being good and the other choice of food as being bad. And, and, and you are actually arguing against that kind of bias to where what you're saying, what you should say is, or I think what you intend to say is that both parties in a referendum ought to present the facts fairly and and not play around with the numbers to make them appear one way or the other. Mm. And and unfortunately, uh, I think uh, you you fell into the same trap. So uh, I am up. I, I, of course, very much for allowing a referendum. I know we we have a, a government that is elected to govern, um, and basically we appoint them for four years to do so. But when there are big issues such as a a port, I do believe that the populace, the voting public, the citizens of the country have the right to make their voices heard. So um, I, I'm very much in favor of uh, of being given the, the option uh, that the referendum uh, affords. Thank you. 
Thank you, Carlo. Thank you very much, Carlo. Um, just, just, just quickly. Sure. Um, I, I apologize if um, the way I've worded my example was a bit confusing. Um, and probably you're right by suggesting that um, my example of going for food, um, one was bad and one was good. Um, the premise of it is having a choice, and he's correct. So maybe I shouldn't have decided to say which 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 restaurant we go to and which one is unhealthy or not. Uh, but but I'm glad that that he agreed that ultimately everybody should have the right to have their say and democracy must win no matter which issue it is that we're talking about. So thank you so much, caller, for calling in. Okay. Next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Oh, no, it's been, uh, Brian. Roger good. Marin here. Good morning, sir. Just a, just a brief statement from me, not be long. Um, where I see a lot of money being wasted is that a project at the port, a big project at the port, any, any big project that they do, in the island, as far as I'm concerned, the people should rule on it. And a referendum should have been called before they spent money on drawing plans for the port. How much money have they spent on drawing plans for the port and studies on, on, on the ocean out there and everything else? I mean, that's money already spent. Hmm. So if the referendum says that, you know, we're not going to put the port there, then that money's gone down the garbage can. Very true. Very so true. this is what they're saying, oh, a referendum will stop it because, you know, we can have spent a lot of money on it. Well, you should you shouldn't have spent the money on the, on the study first. That's they, a good they're, point. They're, they're working in reverse. You understand? And, and any big project, the people should rule on it. It's a democratic society. And I've called and talked to some time ago, and I told him, for the last 40 years, all I've seen came out is communism. They go in and do what they want to do, and, and don't come back to the people and say anything. Not only this crowd, but previous politicians have done the same thing. You know? It's time, and that's why the people are waking up now and getting frustrated and seeing all the the expense and stuff that government is the money being wasted away all the time. You know, we, we're getting fed up with that. And the airport, that's another living nightmare. You, you know, it, it rains up there almost every day now, and you're getting drowned putting people in the car. I drive a cab at the airport, and there is no shelter. No shelter there. That's the first thing they should have in the plan, to cover the whole drive-through area. They can get shelter from rain. And now they've got to spend a lot more money to put shelter up there again. That's another project that, you know, is, is a mess. Come on, we need to be careful how we're spending money. Anyway, you guys, have a great day. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much, Carla, for that. We're going to take yeah. a commercial break. When we return, the conversation with MLA, Mr. Kenneth Bryan, will continue. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Hi, I'm thinking of buying a car from the States. Which port do you ship out of? Hi, we ship out of Miami, Houston, and Brooklyn. Just let us know your port of choice, and we can provide you with a quotation. And answer any questions you may have on insuring and protecting your vehicle during its journey. Shipping shore to shore, sea. Not all insurance is created equal, but who has the time to shop around? Take the guesswork out of your insurance coverage with Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Let us match you with the best coverage to suit your needs at a price to suit your wallet. Plus, get superior customer service from dedicated claims professionals to ensure speedy claims processing. Get your insurance through Fidelity Insurance Brokers. Call us today at 949-7822 for a free quote. Fidelity, we're good for you. Did you hear that Vant Motors has your sale going on now? And you get your choice in the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. System 1-800-534-8255. What is on your mind when it comes to the government, independence, and the opposition? Issues that matter to you. one 800 Five three four eight two five five. Waiting to hear from you for the record with your host Arit Connor. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record in the studio with me, MLA Mr. Kenneth Bryan. We have one more caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, caller. Good morning. Good morning. Go right ahead. Good morning, Mr. Bryan. Good morning, ma'am. I just want to say that that caller just now, I became up 110%. He spoke the truth. 
and I'll say no more at this present time. I'll see what comes out later and take me the call back. But what Roger just said, he couldn't say any better than I. I thank you guys. Thank you very much, Carla. Talking about the airport, you, you have to build. Start to you have to start building somewhere. The airport project is not complete yet. Mm. They talk about people getting wet. There are certain inconveniences that people have to endure when you're renovating, especially when renovating as opposed to complete new construction. No one has said that there are not going to be walkways, that not, not going to be covered areas there where uh, people can um, alight from their vehicles and enter the building. No one has said that yet, but everyone wants everything at the same time. At one point in time, there was a complaint. There were no bathrooms um, in the um, arrivals area and stuff like that. They made it appear as if no bathrooms were planned. Uh, well, well, you well, 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 see, I hear your point, but mm-hmm. I think the fact that's this, this is how societies works and, 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 and the community members voice their opinions. Mm-hmm. The fact is, you're right. Nobody has said it. If somebody had said, listen, um, it's a potential plan later on to have the driveways covered eventually. I think that goes without saying. If people, no, no, if it, people look at the plans that are there, mm-hmm. there, there are design plans, there are conceptual drawings of it. If you look at it, you'll see exactly what is being proposed, what's there. Okay, so I think we're then suggesting that um, the caller didn't inform himself. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm suggesting, okay. yes. Well, well um, he, he's a Caymanian. He's a voter. He has a right to query those things, and I would never take away that right from him. But you're entitled um, to your own views, but not your own facts. That's true. So, so what, what, we sh- what we should do then on his behalf is to find out whether or not those are things that will be completed in the project. Mm-hmm. Because if they're not, he has a legitimate claim mm-hmm. and a con- legitimate concern. Mm-hmm. I would be concerned as well. So if, if you remember, we gotta, this goes right back to the discussion we're talking about right now about democracy. The onus is on the government to inform the people. We keep on saying uh, we have this approach to go, well, go find out the information. Go look up the reports. Go read it for yourself. And that's what's got the government in this position today. Not necessarily because the port is not a good thing for the country. It's because they fail to give the people comfort to know that it's the right thing or to tell them the information surrounding any one topic. Um, And and that caller, obviously he hasn't heard enough. A person who has a, a, a stakeholder in the industry, a taxi driver, I don't know who it is, but he's involved in that process. If he doesn't know, what about a person who works in a kitchen in North Side that has nothing to do with the airport? How, how do they know? I mean, I, I would expect that he would be exposed to it in some capacity. So I, I think the onus is on the government to comfort the people to make sure they're doing the job right. And uh, you can't, you, you're the government. You have the power, you have the control, you have access to radio shows like this that is paid for by government. You have access to GIS. You're spending money um, in, in the papers to, to to give information now, and it's only a matter of the fact that the people are, are questioning it. You have the power to do it. Inform the people. That's my viewpoint on that. But okay, we have four callers queued oh up my. there. <laughs> uh, we're going to ask each caller to be not as brief as possible, to be brief. <laughs> Because, well, you know, uh, possibility is all relative. Uh, caller, first caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hi, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, uh, morning, sir. How are you? I'm, I'm all right, sir. I'll just jump straight in. First of all, I just want to say, uh, Emily, Bryant, you and I don't normally agree on, 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 on things, at least privately. Um, but I have to say, the summary that you provided this morning on the position taken by the government and the newest campaign to say that a vote against the um, uh, a, a vote against the re- referendum, uh, oh, sorry, signing the petition for a referendum is a vote against the port. I think, Mr. O.C., you have been a civil servant as long as I've been born, um, and you are well-versed in how these things operate. Mm-hmm. But the Constitution clearly provides Section 70, which is a fundamental right, because that's the document that provides you your right. Section 70 outlines what a people's initiated mm-hmm. referendum is all about. Right. So now if you have the government spending their own, spending our tax dollar, co-opting their efforts along with the pro-port lobbyists and saying categorically, yes, we are working with the pro-port lobbyists and those that effectively are driving the process. 
that's your government fighting against you and you exercising your right under Section 70 of the Cayman Islands Constitution. Now, I'll leave that there with you for a minute, but I just want to ask a few questions. Mr. O.C., have you seen the plans or the proposed plans for the project, the cruise birthing facility? No, sir. No, sir, I haven't. Mr. O.C., do you know how um, the government intends to finance um, the, the, the construction um, of, 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 of the cruise birthing pairs? Not in, not in uh, minute detail either, no. Okay, sir. Have, are you in support of the cruise birthing facility? Uh, yes, I am in support of the fact that we need to improve the cruise birthing facility. Uh, we need to have the ability to accommodate those size and class vessels that we cannot accommodate now and that we're told we may lose as a result of it. Yes. No, f- fair enough. And Mr. O.C., I would dare say to you, sir, and your mastery of English languages is first class you should provide a solution as to how we're going to be able to do that because I'll be accused of just being anti-port and I'm not anti-anything other than I would like to see a comprehensive plan for my country and exactly what the bells and whistles entail in order to understand whether we're building something that we really need or we're financing and mortgaging the future of our country for something that we would really like to have versus what we really need because right now the Cayman Islands has record number of cruise ship passenger arrivals um, okay, Carla, remember, r- remember, I ask you to be brief so we can't get yeah, into yeah, too much uh, no, no, many no, no, details. I, I, I'm being brief. I'm saying, sir, if the country and the government and the policymakers, and here's a solution, and I hope you'll take note of this so the next time you quote any of the anti port people as we're labeled, sir, it would be far more cheaper to legalize gambling and to have a state sponsored casino um, for our tourists to engage and enjoy themselves. In just like in the Bahamas or, or, or other places, than it would be to spend $200 million on a port. And when we say $200 million on a port, rest assured, the project's going to cost probably double that. If you look at the disaster at the airport now, the cost overruns there are significant, and the track record of this government clearly states fiscal management, project management is not what they do best. Mm-hmm. So when people ask questions, there's a reason why I, Renard Johan Moxham, are asking questions. If I felt that the government were forthcoming and transparent with the information, because make no mistake, tonight's meeting is not being held because the government chooses to share the information. The government have been pressed into this position because they recognize the threat of a people's initiated referendum is very real and they are reacting. I, I agree with you with that. I agree. The the, the uh, whole optics of the whole thing and uh, the government's position and the way that they handle it, I don't agree with that at all. I think they handle it poorly. And as a result, they're now in reaction mode rather than proactive mode. Caller, I'm going to ask you to leave us there. Let's go to the next caller. Good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Kenneth, how are you? Not too bad, sir. Good. Uh, oh, see, I have a little bit of disagreement with you here this morning with N- the airport. Not a problem. Um, I don't know how often you go to the airport, but I go up there pretty often. And I don't think anybody made any comments about um, walkaways to protect people from the weather is not going to be there. What I can comment on, and, and it's facts, and if you got there, you'll see it for yourself. Where those taxi drivers parks their van, mm-hmm. there's a metal structure goes all the way down the ladder of that walkway, okay? Now, that has been there, finished and completed for the last six months. And I see hooks on top of that where a canopy will be installed on that. Now, you need to tell me this morning, why couldn't that be done in six months? And all of the rest of the front part of that building is pretty much finished where, where, where the passengers leave, come out of the airport, right? That should have been done to give the people some protection. And I think that is pretty much what Roger and my sister is complaining about this morning. So um, sorry about you know, your, your, well, your, your comments. I, I have to disagree with you. Okay, no problem with that at all. Uh, next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning, Mr. Uh, Bernard. How are you? I'm fine. Morning. How are you? Good morning, Mr. Bernard. How are you? Good morning, sir. I'm fine. Thank you. Um, I just have a question because I want to know. Just ask a question. Um, do we need a dock? Yes. You know why? 
you have people out there that don't want to come off because would well, you like your family to come off? You know, so that, that they're kind of um, not handicapped, but anyway, disabled to come off the float, uh, come off that ship with that ship rocking and stuff. Do they go there and, and go on board those ships and see how they be rocking and stuff? It's not easy. You know? We need it though. I don't know why they can put it, but we need it. You remember when when Mister Jim was building the airport? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> they said, "But oh, when he building such a big airport, the body can put cows in it." You see today, right now, right now, because that's where part I be. Yeah. We- and right now, that's small inside. Sometimes it's small inside with the passengers. In the next five years or ten years, they're gonna have to expand it again. Mm-hmm. I tell you that if they're gonna bring in bigger planes and stuff. They need expansion. And they have to take time. If they don't have the money to put the jet waves in, just time. And also, I know, like the tax thing, that should have been covered for the taxes, them also. But thank God, part will be open enough for the pastors to walk down, straight down from customs, down into the, um, the departure. So, but we need a dog. We really need a dog. Because there's a lot of pastors that come here that need it, won't come off, and they can't come off. Some people with the rock and stuff, it's not easy. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Some people know him know that. Also, thank you and have a blessed day. Thank you very much, caller, uh, for that as well. Next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, good morning, Mr. O.C. Uh, morning, sir. All right, I'm going to need uh, a couple of extra minutes because I've got quite a bit to say. Uh, no, we don't, have a, we don't have a whole lot of time. We have people queued up, so I need you to get to the point very quickly this morning. I know I couldn't get on yesterday. How many mm-hmm. minutes I got? Uh, two minutes. Two minutes? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and it's going... The clock is moving. <laughs> okay, listen, they do make them be sad. I got to get at least five minutes with Dorsey, uh-huh. please. Listen to me. Uh, they're talking about this, the dock. Yes, we need a dock. We need a dock bad. I think we need a dock very bad. But we don't need the dock in Georgetown. You put the dock in Georgetown, when you get bad, whether the dock can work. That's number one. For uh, quite a few reasons why you don't need a dock in Georgetown. That's one. You still got to go around the spots. If uh, Georgetown is congested the way it is, if you put them big ships in there now, with that many more people, it's going to get worse. Another thing is, nobody can guarantee me or you or anybody that it's not going to mess up Seven Mile Beach. Mm-hmm. I'm 76 years old, sir, and I've tra- walked up and down Seven Mile Beach one time. I was six, seven, eight years old fishing, catching fish, cooking along the beach and whatnot. I see what the tides and the water do. Move the sand from this way and the carry that way. They move from there and they bring it back. All of those white holes you see out there, and then when you look out there, is sand. Now the sand goes out there and it comes back. I don't know what the tide is going to change, but they got, well, okay. They got one house in West Bay right by uh, the four over there. Uh, it's down in the water. Sometimes mm-hmm. you got about three and a half, four foot of water up against the house, and it changes the tide and it takes all the sand out from around there. Uh, by where the museum is, and all you got there is rocks. Now, that's just that little house, the corner with in the water, too far down on the beach. They made them build too far down on the beach. Now, what this dock is going to do with the trees and the floor side, I don't know. I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows, because nature built this island, and all that is nature done. No man now built nothing there. Uh, that's another reason why I think the dock shouldn't be in Georgetown. Um why do they can't understand, or why the government can't understand that the docks should go in Red Bay? I know they got some buildings up there now and this and that, but on the upper part of Red Bay, it could still go because that land that was still in there, they stopped the other day from doing something there. It's plenty of space there that you could still put the dock. Mm-hmm. And do we have yeah, the, the do we have the infrastructure in Red Bay, the road infrastructure, and everything else that is needed then to handle the traffic? Do we have that there now? Yes, yes, but that was all in the plan that Mr. Hulston and uh, Mr. Jackson have done the other day. I don't know if you saw that plan. I guess you saw it, yes. Uh, no, that no. was joining up in the main road, coming mm-hmm. west, going east. Okay, okay. Uh, now, uh, the situation with that is, when you've got the boat, they, they, they're talking about helping the taxi drivers and the tour operators and this and that and the next thing like that. Let me say this. All the taxi drivers know, I know, if you got one ship in Georgetown, half the drivers go home without a dollar in their pocket for the day. If you got one ship at spots, everybody go home with at least three, four hundred dollars. Why? Because the people have to pay five dollars a person to come from spots into town. Now, if the, sh- if the boat was in Red Bay, if the dock was in Red Bay, 
uh, you can't charge five dollars though, but you will charge four. That's what they do anyway, as it is. Now, uh, have you got uh, five or six ships in in Red Caller, Bay? Caller, you, you need to get to your point because you're running out of time. You yeah, have I run out of time, actually. I made a lot of points, but just give me two minutes more. One minute more. I made a. If you got a dock in Red Bay, you can't charge five dollars. You charge four. You say that but already. You, you say that already. I know, but you see, you're confused, man. You got five or six ships in Georgetown and the Red Bay. So you got 18,000 people. Suppose you got 18,000 people there. And maybe only 15 come into town. Right? That is four times 15. That is $60,000 the people are going to have to pay to come into town. Now, remember, they got to go back. That's mm-hmm. another $60,000. That's $120,000 just for the taxes alone. Call that's, not talk, that's not talking about the beach. Or about the tours because it's seven dollars from spots to the beach, so he charged six from Red Bay. Okay, caller, I'm going to ask you to leave us there. That caller, obviously speaking in behalf of the taxes, so he sees the cruise ship, the cruise passengers, in terms of taxes and what they will get from it. But there are many, many aspects of the tourism product, many players involved in it as well. Uh, so. Mr. Brian, I hope we don't forget that you were on the show this yes, morning. Yes. <laughs> 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 Folks, we're going to take a commercial break. When we return, I think we still have a couple of callers left uh, on hold. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. A pharmacy is where you go for medicine and for the pharmacist's advice on how to take them. Here at CT Mace Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, our pharmacists are trusted health professionals whose job is to help people receive the best results out of their medicine. They know exactly what's in your prescriptions and will be happy to answer any of your questions. You can be sure that our pharmacist will see that your medicine is at the right strength, in the right dose, and will check that you yourself know how to take them or use them properly. Come in today for a consultation with our pharmacist at CTMH Doctors Hospital Pharmacy, where we care about your health. Attention Radio Cayman listeners, don't forget to register for the 12th annual Grand Cayman Breeze Fusion 5K Walk Run. Help us in raising funds for the NCVO and the John Gray High School Musical Department. Registration is only $15 for adults if registered by September 30th. The walk run will take place Saturday, November 3rd at Smith's Bacadere, but you must be registered by September 30th to take advantage of the lower fee. Visit CaymanActive.com to register today or you can stop by here at Radio Cayman on Elgin Avenue. At Seaboard Marine, customers often ask us questions about their shipments. Can you explain what a left and container load is for shipment and what your minimum charge is? Sure. A less than container load or LCL is any overseas shipment that does not require the full space of a container. At Seaboard, we have great rates for small packages. Just let us know the dimensions of your package and we'll help you out from there. Shipping shore to shore, Seaboard. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orrit Connor. Continues right now on Radio Cayman. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record, going straight to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, caller. Welcome to For the Record. Uh, let's go to the next caller. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, am I on? Uh, yes, you are. Oh, okay. Just one quick question. Um, before I stop by the dog, I'm wondering, as I mentioned at the airport, and you got 15,000, 20,000 people on the dock. What happened when it rained? I don't have anything about any infrastructure for covering or anything. You know? But let's say if I what I could do if it rained, and you got 10,000, 15,000 people down there. Okay? Thank you. Uh, uh, good question. Um, uh, we'll see if I can chime in. Sure. Um, you see, what I've been noticing throughout a lot of the discussions about... Um, this democratic process that that we should have is a lot of phrases and a lot of um, words that, that that cause concern for me. Like I've, since I've been here on the show, I've heard I don't know, I don't understand why is this, when, how. So there's a lot of questions, and that tells you the sentiment of what the people are feeling. Right, regardless of what the answer is to those things, it's unclear. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and remember why I want to give the foundation to to why I support the referendum, and I want to make this clear: I'm not against the development of 
um, crew sport. But it has to be justified in a clear manner to the people to choose. What a referendum does is two very important things. Put the power where it truly lies, which is in the people's hands. Secondly, it forces a reaction, and that reaction is information um, uh, dissemination. It forces those who don't believe it's a good thing to prove to the people that it's not a good thing. It forces the government and those who support uh, um, the port to get out there and prove that it's a good thing. So it's a matter of discussion and debate to say, listen, I believe this is the best way forward. You believe it's not. And it's the same thing with Brexit. Obviously, at that time, I mean, depends on whether you think Brexit is a good thing or not, right? It's all in the eyes of, of the, the beholder. Um, the Those who were campaigning for Brexit to happen was more was better at convincing the people of the negatives or, or the benefits of Brexit. Now, if you are not good with your information, then you can fail. But the right is nobody can complain in England now. Nobody, because the people had their choice. So nobody is there to blame. And I think it's an opportunity that the government should take because if they did the wrong thing without a referendum, they will forever, ever, and ever have to deal with making a potential wrong choice without discussing with the people. If I was the premier... But they, still, they still will have to do that for those uh, persons who are against it because at the end of the day, those persons who are, are against it, mm-hmm. if they were to lose in a referendum, mm-hmm. right, they still have their position. Mm-hmm. They're going to still blame the government but at, what the is end, the, at the end of the day. That's true. But what is the obligation of the government? So let's say, let's, let's focus on that for a second. You're saying that those who were against it are going to forever be against yeah. it. But at least if, for me, if I was the leader of this country, I would say, listen, fine, you don't agree with my position, but, but, people, I, I, but I'm going to let the majority mm-hmm. speak. Mm-hmm. I've given you your democratic constitutional opportunity. I didn't take that away from you. If I say to you, no, I don't care what you say, I'm going to do it anyway. That is a very serious thing. Now, you can live with a decision to say, the people told me those seven people out of the 12 wanted to go this direction. And my job as a representative is to do the democratic thing. And democracy is the definition of majority. Right. So you can't get away. No matter how we check this, no matter how we play it, democracy should rule this decision. And it doesn't. Ha- not, it's not only about crews. It's about many major things that we do. One of the callers said before, I know that we may have another caller, but I think it's important what that caller said. The caller said, because of the seriousness of this and because it's been so much hype around it for so long, we probably should have done a referendum before. I think that would have been smart to say, you know what, just to make sure that we got this right, we should have probably put the question on whether we should have peers um, in the last election and we could have saved some money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Then you have the mandate of the people. You see, the question comes up because the government says today they have the mandate of the people. And people go, well, how, how, can you, how, how can you be drawn to that conclusion? You don't know why each person voted for you. You have a manifesto. It's listed with probably 50-odd different hopes and dreams. And I may say, okay, I'm supporting you for these 35. And maybe the port wasn't in it. So it's, I, can, I can debate whether or not they have the mandate. Everybody says they would, they would support it, but it support a, 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 a cruise port. But... If we said to the people today that it's going to cost us $1 trillion to build a cruise port, you think everybody would support it? Mm-hmm. No. So we, when examining that, I think the government's obligation just for the people's democratic choice and to making sure that you're doing the right thing, let the people decide. I think they're going to be surprised if they do their job properly. And this is an indictment why we're even here in the first place. Well, well first of all, the, the, the people's initiated referendum has a higher threshold. Yes, very, exactly. very difficult, you know, for that to be reached. I, mm. I, I think, um, at the end of the day, the government is in a better position, even if they were to have the referendum, yeah. people initiated referendum. What, what, one of the things that we heard uh, on the constitutional referendum was that the government has the funding for it. Now, we heard one caller this morning refer to the fact that they're spending the people's money to 
talk about this. Yeah. Those who are in opposition mm-hmm. to the crew's birthing facility, they need to show their hand now mm-hmm. to the extent, because the government will have the machinery behind them mm-hmm. in terms of getting out there and pushing their points. Mm-hmm. Do they have the funding to ooh, for, ooh. For, for, for their campaign, those in opposition? Do they have the funding? Because we heard during the constitutional referendum, mm-hmm. the opposition saying, oh, we, want, we need government to support us financially on this because we don't have the funds to fight. To um, you know, to to uh, to get out there and to fight and combat this, the, the information yeah, yes, um, yes, yes. Uh, system. You're, so you're they, right, they so need so. to show their hand early, I, 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 you I, know, I, as well. Because when we're talking about costs, when we're talking about costs, mm. those are costs that are included in that. So can they do this independently? Can they fight the government independently, or are they going to need money from the government to be able to fight? That's government. a good. That's a very good <laughs> point. But the fact that we're saying they will have to fight the government is concerning in itself. I, I think, and this is something that I called for on Facebook, and I've called so publicly on other shows as well. Yeah, is that or ch- th- challenge the government. Ch- challenge, maybe, yeah. Be. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, um, thank you, Miss Susan. <laughs> um, I, I think what we should have is a national televised debate where you have independent host and in, um, in, in moderator. And then you have an independent group of people for fact checking. I think that could solve that problem because yes, people are going off in isolation, and we don't know what information they're they're giving out. Because what here's one of the big problems that we're having, right? We're you said that you were told that if we don't have these um, mega ships, that we're going to lose. The, it, it has the, been said. It has been said. Is that true? And I think there's an element of truth to it. Well, okay. Why am I even questioning whether that's true? Because there's a concern of trust. Now, I people are, are wary now of information that is coming from both sides, mm-hmm. not only the government side, but both sides, because each person have their own interest as into wanting to go one direction or the other. Hence the reason why I think we need an independent group of individuals who don't have a, a, a strike in the game to, to verify information and facts and make both sides be presented so the people have genuine information. Because at this particular point, one of the biggest things is people are saying, I don't know who to trust. We've had information presented in the paper sponsored by the government, suggesting things that data proves otherwise. So the question is, is the government stretching the truth for their own benefit? Or not being totally transparent. Now, it, it, when it, if before we go to the the next talk caller, because I'm assuming uh, we, somebody's going to actually call. We, we're going to headline news at nine o'clock. Okay, uh, when we get back, I want to just got about forty five seconds. Okay, but when we get back, the two things I want to deal with before I leave the show today. One is there's a suggestion that a delay would kill the port. Um, I want to examine that and see whether actually that is true. Mm-hmm. So a little bit of banter between me and you in respect to that. Sure. And before I leave the show, I really want to speak about the authorities in this country and the fact that they did not get a raise, but the civil service did. Now, I know I just want to leave it there. When we come, when we come back in after dealing with that first um, delay question, we can go into that because I think there's a major concern for all the employees at the authorities in okay. this country. Do we have uh, any callers on hold, Ms. Susan? We have two callers on hold. We're going to uh, do the headline news, which is very quickly. It will be done very quickly, and then we will take those two callers. Please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. Satisfaction is guaranteed 24 hours a day, whether it's music or information. From Grand Cayman to Kim and Brack to Little Cayman, we've got you covered. You ever hear a thing like that? Radio Cayman in the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman. Radio Cayman's newsroom. These are the biggest stories right now.
It's a thank you from the Cayman Islands Airports Authority. CIAA presented certificates of commendation and appreciation to volunteers and emergency responders who volunteered as victims or support personnel for the recent full-scale emergency exercise staged at the Charles Kirkconnell International Airport in Cayman Brack. U.S. President Donald Trump is expected to voice fresh criticism of Iran later when he chairs a U.N. Security Council session on the non-proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. It's only the third time a U.S. leader has presided over the body. On Tuesday, Mr. Trump accused Iran's leaders of sowing chaos, death and destruction in an address to the U.N. General Assembly in New York. An India Supreme Court has ruled that the country's controversial biometric identity scheme is constitutional and does not violate the rights of privacy. However, the court limited the scope of the scheme, saying it could not be compulsory for bank accounts, mobile connections, or school admissions. The world's largest biometric ID database covers welfare and tax payments and access to social services. Those are your headlines. I'm Carsley Fuller. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. What's happening in your community? News and information, music and more. Radio you can find us. www.radiokman.gov.ky Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Radio Cayman is your choice, your voice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. Initiating system for information that matter for the record with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning and welcome back to For the Record. As promised, we're going straight to the phone lines. Caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Good morning, Mr. Moderator, and good morning to MLA Kenneth Bryan. Good morning, good morning, sir. Yeah, concerning the the dog, I got two two things to talk about. Concerning the dog, um, I am still pro Captain Charles' idea. Captain Charles' idea was to put the dog in the North Sound. Mm. Um, his idea was to dredge and build a island. And then me adding to that would be to build an additional island for, and then we call it Picnic Key. Because as <laughs> you know now, we, our tradition was embedded in picnic and every Easter. And a lot of the places we used to picnic are now gone. They're gone. I can tell you that. Mm-hmm. We had places in Colliers that we thought were our property just because we picnic there. And now homes are being built there. So we need to build an additional island in the North Sound for picnic, for recreational, right? We call it Picnic Key. And Captain Charles, that's the only, of all the ideas I heard, that's the only scientific kind of um, evidence that we had. He had Mr. Bobby Soto and then went into the North Sound and placed little flags at the bottom of the ocean to see how the current runs and all that. And it was determined that the currents go from west to east, right? So there was no problem with moving sand from the, from the um, spring wristed and all that kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm still with Captain Charles' idea. Captain Charles had interest on the waterfront, and the idea was to put in the North Sound. Okay, and the next, the, next, um, the next thing I want to talk about is this idea about sending us a temporary governor. <laughs> a temporary? You think the temporary governor... They're going to come here, jump off the plane here. Is there any more experience than Franz Manderson? Franz Manderson know everything about the island, and he's temporary. And we're going to replace him with a temporary? No, we don't want no temporary. Mm-hmm. We're going to keep Franz as a temporary until the real deal comes. And even, even then, Franz will have more experience than the real one that's coming about this country. But you, so, heard, you heard what I said about that on, on Monday, right? The U.K., does not want it to appear. They, they don't want it to be obvious that we really don't need them to send a governor to us. But they can't do that. That's why they, they want to send someone. They don't want uh, Mr. Manderson to continue to act for another year because that it would prove our point that we really don't need a governor from the U.K. Well, we need to kick out on that. We have a temporary. We do not want a temporary. Let's keep our temporary until. And if it means going over a year, Bell that go over here, and that will prove then, like you say, we really don't need a new one to come. <laughs> if we can't get our old, that, that little new one that just disappear, if we can't get him back, we keep him friends. <laughs> okay? Yep. All right. Thank you very much, caller. Right. Next caller, good morning. Welcome to For the Record. Yeah, OC? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry about that again, again. Um, I would like to find out if they have any idea the government 
what this road from Moringa Town going right across on the whole waterfront, when they build that dock, if they do not have to restructure all of these roads and things, a lot of people just saying, yeah, listen, O.C. and Mr. Brian, I agree 100% that we do need a dock, but not in Georgetown. Not in Georgetown. This is the only little bit of beauty that we got left. This is the only tranquility area that you can look out and see the beautiful ocean and whatnot because you can't go um, seven mile beach no more. You can't see no 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 beach. You can hardly see sand now. You're talking about beach. But you can still, the old Caymanians can still go about on the waterfront and look at the ships and things. But we do not need that port in Georgetown because the whole, all this road, everything goes how to be restructured. Well, no isn't that, isn't that a part? That, that's a that. part of the Georgetown revitalization plan as well. It's yeah, all that, it's that, all that, being yeah. um, planned to coincide with with, with the um, you know with the birthing facilities. Um, caller, finish. Yeah, thank you, caller. Okay, um, because I'm, because we're running out of time, and I, as much as I, I love to give the callers as much opportunities as possible, I really want to to get past um, this 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 topic in sure, respect sure. to yes. to the cruise port. Um, the there, the suggestion in today's um, newspaper is that the delay will kill the port referendum. Um, I want to examine that because. They're basically the suggestion by a government representative is that it would delay it another two years or, or something to that sort, which because the the procurement process takes two years. Um, we know we've had situations where a referendum is called in within three months. Um, we could have the referendum and the, the answer given. I don't see why, because in the paper it suggests that. Um, the bidders, let me read exactly what is quoted in the paper. I think that's more important. And it mm-hmm. is the Cayman Compass. It says, a Ministry uh, of Tourism spokesperson stood by the social media claim telling the Cayman Compass that holding a referendum at this stage would likely mean the bidders would walk away from the process. And that's what would stop the port. I don't think that is correct. I think, yet again, stretching the truth for benefit of just trying to get people not to sign the petition. I think that's wrong. It goes hand in hand with this this the sentiment that is being said S- signing the referendum, the petition for referendum is a no vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think now, that's using scare tactics. I scare tactics but but, but but if you agree that that is scare tactics, is that what we expect from our government? Matter of fact, and I know that the Ministry of Tourism is listening to this show. That's their job is to monitor what other politicians are saying. I expect the Minister of Tourism to clarify today, tonight at that show, to say that they do not support that claim. It's unconstitutional and it is wrong. They have to take that down and they have to stop selling that picture. You're fighting against democracy and I don't think it's right. Mm-hmm. And now, that, the, the paper um, attributed that to... to, to, to they won't say which, which person... But uh-huh. but I but we know I know that the government is saying so because even on their own Facebook page, which they're paying to monitor, these exact same words are on there and being spread around. I find you want the doc, that's fine. Convince the people that it's the right thing to do. I don't have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. But do not indicate that people should not sign a petition to have their own democratic right to try to say that that's going to stop the port. I believe that the government should be confident enough to say, listen, I'm going to have a, 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 a referendum tomorrow and we're still going to win. That's what, how confident they should be. The fact that there's scare tactics on behalf of the government is a sad sign. Sad, sad sign. And, I, and I, I'm, I'm disappointed, really, because I didn't want to get involved. I think, uh, or, or pick sides, so to speak. I think that the people should choose. It's a serious, major project in our history if we move forward with it. Mm-hmm. And I think the people should have their say. But the behavior, you see, those who are, are, who are non-governmental, I expect anything out of them. So if they, if they, if they give false information and all that, I, the, there's, there's no level of expectation for you. 
And, and if you do wrong, so be it. That's a part of the process. The expectation in government is a higher threshold. And I expect the minister to keep that standard. Otherwise, he's going to lose support. There's many people coming to me saying, oh, my goodness. Now I'm definitely going to support the petition because of that behavior. Anyway, I think we'll flush that out as much as possible. I think people I th- know. I, th- I think the government should feel extremely confident in going to a referendum on, on the issue. Depending on what the question is, they will have a say. They in will determine that, yeah. what, what the question is. I think the government should feel extremely confident in that. And, and at the end of the day, if they were to fail in the referendum, mm-hmm. then people have decided, then we suffer the consequences, whether or mm-hmm. not they're good mm-hmm. consequences or they're bad consequences, you know, we will have to suffer them at it, the end of the day. It, we have seen in the past what has happened. We struggle now with our road network because the master ground transportation plan didn't was shelved yeah. that never went yeah. through. Agreed. We ended up with a dock that we have now and that we had to extend because Mr. Berkeley Bush's project was opposed. And to the point where all of those members of the Legislative Assembly were voted out of office in the, in the next uh, election. Mm-hmm. So we need to take a little look, at uh, a close look at our history, at our record, and see where we're at. We have always been lagging behind. Someone spoke about the airport. Nineteen, two years after mm-hmm. we moved into that Owen Roberts International Airport, the new terminal, we had already outgrown it. Yeah. Why? Because people do not see the potential that we have here in the Cayman Islands. And not only that, we can't agree on how far we want to take that potential that we have here in the Cayman Islands. But yet, there are people who are calling for larger population, a population of mm. 100,000 and everything else. How are we going to do it? But guess what? But guess what, O.C.? Out of all of that, guess who gets to choose? It's the people's yes, choice. Yes, yes. So if I say that I want to live in one little old shack and I want to live there for the rest of my life and enjoy my cultural beliefs and how the old school way, that is their choice. But you we, used the word earlier, democracy. Yes. And democracy has an aspect of it where the majority, majority rules. rules. Okay, yes, yes. so bottom line is, so we agree then that if majority of the people, because what we're getting into is those who want new development, those who want to stay the same. If the majority of the people in this country say we are going to move forward fast pace and we're going down the direction of prosperity and, and, and growth, then you have the mandate of the people. It's simple. Democracy is easy, you know. But that means you're giving the people the power. Unfortunately, sometimes we are afraid to allow the people to choose for themselves because we always think we're better than them. A representative job is to act on behalf of the people, not act on your behalf. And the best way for the government to know how to behave or how to act for them is to ask them the question. I support the referendum. And by all means, I believe there's good enough arguments to support the port. They should be confident enough. Stop being afraid. It shows, it gives a negative connotation to it. I would like to take this opportunity to move on to a different topic. Sure. I know we're mm-hmm. going to run out of time. Um, OC, what is the difference between a an authority and the civil service? Being 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 a stellar that you are, be a head of the department and a cabinet um, um, secretary. Ooh. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take a a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I I will um, point that out to you. Folks, please stay tuned for the record. We'll be back shortly. Did you hear that Vant Motors has your sale going on now and you get your choice on the money you'll save on your new car or truck? My sale? My choice? Really? Yeah! And they have lots of cars on sale. Some up to $7,000 off. Sounds pretty good. It gets even better. You can choose to take the full discount or you can get some or all of it as cash back. Extra cash back would be great. Exactly! And you can even use the savings to extend your warranty or service plan so you'll drive worry-free for years longer. Another good idea. 
idea. If you want to upgrade with something like a new roof rack or backup camera, you can choose that too. Wow, I get to choose? Yeah, that's why it's your sale, your choice. Going on now at Vant Motors on Walker's Road, while stocks last. Are you feeling sick but don't feel ill enough to go to the doctor? Ask your pharmacist for advice. Here at West Bay Pharmacy, our pharmacists have been trained to offer helpful, easy-to-understand advice on the treatment of everyday minor ailments for yourself and all the family. Anything from headaches, cough, and sore throat to cold sores, our pharmacists will know when medical help is needed and will not hesitate to refer you to your doctor if your symptoms demand it. Like doctors, our pharmacists have a professional code, which means all personal information you give them will be treated in the strictest confidence. Visit us today at West Bay Pharmacy, where we care about your health. Attention Breeze Fusion fans and supporters. Registration is now open for the 12th annual Grand Cayman Breeze Fusion 5K Walk Run. We're calling on you to help us in raising funds for the NCBO and for the John Gray High School Musical Department. Registration is only $15 for adults if registered by September 30th. The walk run will take place on Saturday, November 3rd at the Smith's Back of the Air in Grand Cayman. But you must be registered by September 30th to take advantage of the lower fee. Visit caymanactive.com to register today. Or stop by Radio Cayman on Elgin Avenue. Initiating system. For information that matter, for the record, with Orit Connor continues right now on Radio K Man. Good morning, and welcome back to For the Record. Before um, I respond to Mr. Brian's question, I just want to read uh, a message that one of our listeners sent, and that was earlier this morning after uh, we discussed and played our national song and says, good morning. Um, I've got a bone to pick about our national song. Has anyone ever given a thought to the fact that the song doesn't include the sister islands? It says, Be- uh, beautiful Isle Cayman, or beloved Isle Cayman. In order for it to be, to include the sister islands, Isle should become Isles. I don't think uh, the composer would have objected to that um, as well. And I believe that that there has been uh, some mention of change of that, and and, um, I think it has been changed to Beloved Isles uh, came on as well. But I will uh, verify that and and get back to the caller, um, to the writer as well, maybe not during this show, but on another uh, show as well. Uh, Mr. Bryan, in in relation uh, to your uh, question in terms of the difference between um, the re- mm. civil service and, and the public uh, public authorities, yeah. um, in the past, public authorities and they still do enjoy a certain amount of autonomy mm-hmm. in terms of running their affairs that are different. Than the government, yes, and then of course you know about the uh, public authorities um, law uh, that went before the legislative assembly, and effectively that is trying to bring them back to, in to line. bring them in line with the, the behaviors, the, the, similar the behaviors core government, the central government in terms of hiring the, practices, uh, various um, administrative mission, procedures, yes. and things of things of that nature as well. Um, whether or not their boards are still empowered to authorize re, um, salary increases mm. to their staff, whether or not it has to go through cabinet for cabinet's approval because it involves spending of government money, mm-hmm. spending of money that they probably don't have, so mm-hmm. it means additional expenses on the government, and those public authorities cannot um, cause the government to incur additional expenses without approval. Mm-hmm. So they may have the authority to approve it, but they may have to get approval from from cabinet um, as well in that regard. So in in this, and 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 I think you're leaning towards this recent announcement of increase. In salary, yes, that goes to civil servants. Mm-hmm. That decision will have to be made by each public authorities because there are times when public authorities have get, been granted, the staff of government and uh, public authorities have been granted raises, mm. and the civil service 
Have hasn't. not. Okay, well, hold up. But, but we're not. Well. I don't think we're talking about raises. There's a difference between a raise and a cost of living increase. Cost of living increase is something that's across the board for everybody. A raise could be selective in different departments or different positions. Um, but I, I think that you went down a road that I'm glad that you went down in mm-hmm. respect to saying that the government would have to give approval to those various different um, authorities to do so because mm-hmm. they can't make that decision mm-hmm. on their own. Now, I'm concerned that there wasn't any discussion about talking with all the authorities because all those authorities fall under one or two ministers in some capacity because we know that those authorities, and I, I think it's important that I highlight some of those authorities. You've got a Port Authority, Health Services Authority, the Airports Authority, the Water Authority, the National Roads Authority, the Monetary Authority, Civil Aviation, Civil Aviation Authority, the Electricity Regulatory Authority. Airports the, Authority. You mentioned that one as well. Airport. The Air, yeah, yep, Airport Authority, mm-hmm. the Information Communication Technology Authority. Now, I've listed quite a few, and I don't think I've covered all of them. There is so many Caymanians who work in these various different authorities, if not hundreds, thousands of Caymanians. What I'm concerned about is if we go back to the premise upon which why we gave the 5% to the civil servants, which is justified and they deserve every penny of it, the cost of living increase in this country. Are we suggesting that the cost of living hasn't increased for all of those Caymanians who work for all of those other authorities? But bear in mind what I said earlier, that Mm. there are times when those authorities have granted increases in salaries to their employees Mm -hmm. and the civil service have not. I think this, what government referred Mm. to, was that the civil service had not seen an increase, cost of living increase in a while. Also bear in mind that many of these government companies and statutory authorities the salaries, the salary ranges and everything are much higher than in core government. That is why you see many of them are able to attract people from Mm -hmm. central government to work in those authorities because terms and conditions, including salaries, are more attractive than they are in core in core government. Okay, well that, that that that's a good point in respect to the argument that there's some some in some of those authorities mm-hmm. the salary scale and it depends on the level also. I yeah, would, I would say yeah, and, and and I agree with that position, but it has nothing to do with the cost of living. Regardless, if you make five thousand dollars or if you make ten thousand dollars. The cost of living has increased with you regardless. But it depends on whether or not you have gotten that already. You have seen oh, that okay, increase. So, okay, very good point. Yeah. So you're suggesting that, well, we don't know if all of these authorities within the time, the last time the civil service got their increase, whether these are authorities separately in their own different um, 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 authorities have gone out and given their their members and their employees an increase. And, Since we, then, and we don't know we because don't know they're that. not accountable uh, to, to a certain extent. They're not accountable to the people of the Cayman Islands. It's, it's the, go- the government that they're accountable to. So oh. we don't know so it. We don't. But we haven't heard too many of them gripe about it. Uh, oh, <laughs> they have. They have. Yeah. And I'm their representative and okay. they've griped to uh-huh. me. Uh-huh. What we do know, and because I'm going to find that information out to come back on this lovely show so we can address that, Mm -hmm. about when the last time they got a cost of living increase, so we can have the facts. So I'm not going to make any accusations until I have the facts. Mm -hmm. But what we do know is that when the government made the cuts, when there was dire times, all of those authorities also made the cuts. uh, Would you agree with that? Uh I can't say with a certainty. Oh, okay, I can say with a certainty okay. that all of them had to make cuts as well. But when government money goes up, it is not an automatic go up for them, but it's an automatic go down for them. I and and I think this it doesn't seem fair in my view. Um, we're not talking about increasing raise. A raise has to do with your performance as an individual under contracts. Because a raise, when you say there's a raise, it's not a raise across the board. The only reason when you get a raise across the board is for a cost of living purpose, mm-hmm. right? But but remember now, uh, the, 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 this new 
go, uh, government management system that was supposed to be in place. There was supposed to be performance um, incentives, yeah. raises, and stuff like that. That doesn't that doesn't happen. So, in in core government itself, there are very few instances, if any, where you get an individual raise because of your performance. When you get it, it's uh, either through uh, increments mm-hmm. or, or, or whatever, but not not based on performance. Well, but you see, I, I think we've muddied the water a little bit because we're talking about raises. This is not, I'm not talking about raises. I'm talking about the increase to substitute for the cost of living increase. I know, I know. Totally that. different thing. Mm-hmm. So whether you're a bad performer at work, a good performer at work, the cost of living has still gone up for you. Mm-hmm. And every one of those individuals who work for all of those various um, different um, authorities have also have to deal with the cost of yeah, milk, yeah. has also have to deal with the cost of gas and fuel. Well, they're, they're, so, their individual authorities need to put a case forward. They, they, they need to they, remember, remember. I disagree with you. No, but... You bear this in mm. mind, right? They are an autonomous yes. body. Yes. Government can't announce and say we're given a raise to all government employees, including members of statutory authorities and government companies. That is what the boards are there for. for. Yes, yes. So the government can't, so make, government can't, can't do that. Can't so, make the decision. So those one, and I, I know of one in particular, which I will not mention, mm-hmm. that has gone through the process mm-hmm. or will go through the process of seeking an increase, the increase mm-hmm. for their employees. But there is a process that has to be well, followed. I, 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 that part I agree with. I mm-hmm. think the part I was disagreeing with just now, OC, is the suggestion that the onus is on all the various different authorities to just go ahead and do it on their own. I think if I was the premier of this country and I justifiably think that the civil servants are due that 5% for the cost of living, I would say to every one of my cabinet, and let me hear, hear me out, to one of my cabinet members, listen, those people who work in those authorities, which the government owns still, go and find out what process needs to be done, get it initiated, because they have to pay the same prices. So unless you're suggesting... But you don't think that if they are already properly compensated and that they have already, their salaries have already been based on the most recent cost of living increase. Like, remember what I told you now, Mm -hmm. they get them, you don't hear about them. The government, in in doing that, you have to be responsible and you have to find out where they are in the process before before you make a decision to say that we're going to give that. But I suggested to you earlier that I am quite confident that many of these authorities have not seen that. So what I'm saying to you is, if I was, this is hypothetical, Mm -hmm. I was the premier, I would say to my cabinet ministers, go and find out what has the authority done. Let's just say we just came into government. What has happened over the last three years? Has there been an increase? Well, then that authority doesn't get. Has the government done that on behalf of all of those authorities? Or are they just saying, you know what, I'm going to just deal with the civil servants alone? That's what their boards and their managers are there for. They're the ones who have their employees. They have control over their employees. That onus is on them. Not well, Yes, it might be a nice gesture for the government, mm. but then in other instances, you would say if, if the shoe was on the other foot mm-hmm. and they were deciding that we're going to decrease mm-hmm. the salary. I bet you people did. would say people would say, oh, the government is interfering and telling the boards what to do. But well, well 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 they have done that. So when they made the cuts, they didn't say, let's wait for the boards to call us to see if they want the cuts. They came, they made a knock on the door and say, listen authority, you need to cut some money. Mm-hmm. So the same initiative that they can do when they did that is the same initiative they can do when it's time to put the money out. Now, Point I, my, 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 my view is, this is my opinion. This is how I would work. Mm-hmm. Now, if the government thinks they just want to leave it up to the authorities rather than think about all the Caymanians who work there and think whether they're deserving of it or not, I respect and I agree with you that if they've gotten it recently, then they probably shouldn't get it because a lot of other people have been dealing with it. But you mm-hmm. can't say that it wouldn't be a good thing for the cabinet to check all of these authorities where these Caymanians work whether they deserve it, they're paying the same prices as everybody else. And that's my viewpoint. And I would like 
because I'm quite sure you'll have government again. And as a good host that you are, is to put the question to them, has the cabinet checked with these authorities to see if those Caymanians are deserving of that 5%? Because I dare say they are. And unless they can justify, and I'm going to be bringing the question to the parliament, unless they can justify to say they have gotten one last year or they've gotten one two years ago, then they have no reason whatsoever not to go out to those authorities and suggest to the boards, I think it's important that we, we put the, the percentage up. Because you're basically saying the civil service workers are better than the workers at the authorities in this country, and I don't think that's the, the well, position they should have. I would say the exact opposite. I would say that those persons who work for statutory authorities and government companies mm-hmm. are much better off than those in core government and civil servants in core uh, government. Yes. Uh, we, we do have a matter of <laughs> difference okay. of opinion. Final, final comments from you, Mr. Um, Brian. Osi, thank you so much for having me on. I think the debate this morning or the dialogue this morning was productive. I think that um, those who listened would have an opportunity to see things in a different light. And, and I love speaking to you. I must say that, Osi, because you didn't you didn't um, buy those gray hairs. You earned them. <laughs> <laughs> and I always seem to be educated more once I've had a conversation with you. I want to thank the callers who called in. Um, I think it's important that everybody gets out t- tonight to go down here and hear the minister. He has uh, v- a lot of information that I think we all should know. And it may be the reason why you don't sign the petition or the reason why you do sign the petition. Um, nobody's asking you to, to take a side, um, but just allow the democratic process to happen. Give the government a chance to prove themselves. If you're not comfortable, then you sign the petition. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't I don't want to be to see as a, be seen as a hurdle in the way of uh, progress in this country. But it has to be democratic, and the people must have a choice. Yeah. I thank you so much for the opportunity. And Susan, I love you very much. Thank you as, again, as usual. And to all those people in Georgetown Central and across the country, and particularly in Kimberbrack and the Sister Islands, have a lovely day. Remember to love each other and love yourself. God now, bless. Now, you spoke about the uh, the meeting this evening. I heard someone uh, made a re- pass some remark on another show that... Uh, and I won't quote them verbatim. I can't quote them verbatim. Mm. But so much to say that if the minister thinks that the this meeting this evening is going to be a walk in the park, he's in for a surprise. I just hope and pray and trust that it does not become an antagonistic I agree. Uh, I agree. situation that people... First, listen. If you have reasonable questions, ask reasonable questions. And like I said on Monday morning, don't go out there and uh, get into your diatribes trying to impress upon people how much you know or how much you think you know. Sit and 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 listen. And there will be people who are sent there to try to... to, to, screw the process up yep. for the for, for the government and get in the way of, of actually dissemination of the information. You have to give the government a chance. You have legitimate questions. There's nothing wrong with posing them in a mm-hmm. polite tone, in a polite manner. Um, so I don't want I don't want those who may not necessarily support the board to go down and to create hurdles for them. Let the democratic process be true and fair and balanced okay. and let the, the best argument win. Okay. Um, and in relation to the uh, callers, uh, the writer's comment in, uh, about the Beloved Isles Cayman, it says that this has been addressed. It is now Beloved Isles Cayman, plural, to satisfy the people that didn't think it included the three islands because Miss, uh, the late uh, Leela Roche uh, Shire, when she said Beloved Isle Cayman, she meant all, plural, yeah. all, all, all of the islands yeah. um, as well. So that has been Clarified now to uh, ensure um, and that there is no doubt Bias. in terms of what what is meant. And one of our other listeners says this is the type of useful interactive discussion that brings out the best information for our listeners as well. So I want to thank that yeah, thank um, you. listener for those comments as well, folks. I want to thank you for allowing Radio Cayman and, by extension, for the record, into your homes, into your vehicles as you traverse the busy roads of the Cayman Islands, into your places of work, whether it be an office, cubicle, or if you're working in the outdoors. I also want to remind you that we are our brothers and our sisters keepers. There is always someone out there who is less fortunate than we are, and I ask you to extend a helping hand to them. If you can't do that, then I suggest you donate to a worthy charity, because we always want to consider those who need, not necessarily those who want, or even those who crave. I say to you, have a great day. Continue to support 
support your radio station, Radio Cayman, John Sterling, Dwayne Banks at 1215 for talk today. And as usual, we ask the good Lord to bless these three beautiful, wonderful Cayman Islands. For the Record is brought to you by Fidelity Bank. For all your banking and pension needs, call or visit a Fidelity branch today. Vamped Motors, the only authorized Ford and Toyota dealership serving the Cayman Islands. And Cayman Pharmacy Group, with locations in West Base and Professional Pharmacy at CTMH Doctors Hospital. The Cayman Pharmacy Group has a location for you just around the corner. And Seaboard Marine. With over 35 shipping ports, find your shipping solution by calling Seaboard Marine at 949-4977.